Hello my precious YouTubers, welcome back to my channel, Piscean Dreadlax here. If you notice a little bit of blacky baggies under my eyes, I am recovering from a cold, so excuse my tones and my words and my stuffiness. I hope that I still come out clearly for everybody. So, jumping right into it, I have decided to do a pros and cons video pertaining to dreadlocks, the pros and cons of having them. I'm going to start with the pros. No brushing. No brushing is absolutely amazing. I used to hate brushing my hair to begin with. I had really long, uh, to the top of my butt crack hair that was very straight. It used to be wavy, but the longer that it got, the, the straighter and heavier that it became. And I hated brushing it, so I would do like the scrunch look or put it in a messy bun after the shower and then take it down with a little bit of hair gel in my hands and I would just let it go and let it be what it was going to be. I hated brushing so if you don't like brushing your hair, dreadlocks are a plus. Dying is easier. I believe that dying is so much easier when you have dreadlocks because your hair is already pre-sectioned. Styling becomes so unique and so much fun. You can do so many cool things with your dreadlocks, it's unreal. Bottom line is there's, there's no wrong thing and because they're in chunks, you can braid them all, you can twist them, you can uh, do these cool little like, you know, twisties to make that awesome perfect bun. This is really sloppy and fast, mind you, but you get what I'm saying. You can um, do these little half, half ups, do a tie like so, and then you can continue that pattern over and over and over and like this crazy overlappage. And it's really cool because Pumpkin likes to be on camera. Excuse me, pups. It's really cool because you don't have to use a hair tie um, eight times out of ten, and then when you do, you use a really giant big one that most people would use as a band, you know, to hold back those wispies when they're really athletic individuals. So it's really nice to style and have all kinds of unique things that you can do with your hair that you cannot do without dreadlocks. And I've discovered that, and that is really fun. Really, really fun. You can even make things look extremely elegant and different, unique. Another pro is a warmer head in the winter time. It is like having a head and neck filled with wool. And especially the most awesome feeling is putting everything right so around your neck like a scarf and throwing up that jacket hood. And it's just so like, snug and cozy and warm and I really really like that about the winter time. That is a pro and then on the con side you will see a con to dreadlocks in the summertime. The transformation I feel is a pro. That can also be on the con side. I'll go into that when we get to the cons but I think that the transformation is a pro in my opinion with my type of personality because I love to see the stages and the development and how every month looks different, especially when you compare uh, a video or your images and pictures from six months ago to now, when you are in the beginning stages of the dreadlock journey. The transformation is amazing. It's so unique and different and each dread turns out looking different, even though you could have done the same remedy to all of them on your head, they will all form their own way and mother nature will take over and that transformation is so pro. Washing less. I, when I had my regular hair, would wash my head, shampoo, all that great stuff, about every other day to every two or three days and that created a more healthier um, scalp, hair growth, appeal for me. It suited me. And after that three day mark, I started to get greasy feeling and oily, especially around the face and especially in summertime. So with that being said, that is what I did without dreadlocks. But with dreadlocks, I can wash my hair once a week, which I like to do. It's either once or twice a week. Um, not so much in the beginning stages, I did once a week to once 
every like week and a half because I really wanted to not undo everything. My hair was that kind of hair type that it needed help knotting, kind of. So to ex better explain, I had to adjust that scenario for myself uh, in the beginning stages of my dreadlock journey. But now I love the less washing because it's only once a week, twice a week. Some prefer to do just once a month. Some only wash their hair like once every other month or, or an as needed basis. Like say they went camping and they came home with all kinds of goodies in their hair and they wanted a nice deep cleanse or wash. But most of the time, you can wash your dreadlocks as often as you want with care on the side. I still think that like oiling on the scalp, oiling throughout dreadlocks, a mister bottle with essential oils throughout your weeks and days are important. But again, it's, in a, it's in a personal opinion and you can wash whenever you want to. And nobody will really notice when the last time you washed, unless you're like really stinky and dirty and smelly. But if you're an average Joe person like myself, you can wash whenever you want to. And that is a definite pro and a big time saver. No conditioning is a pro because it saves a step. However, on the con side, it takes a lot longer to wash the dreadlocks, but it's nice to save a step because everybody could have a step saver in their lives to make their days a little bit easier, especially when you're a mother. And my last pro would be not oily looking and that goes along with washing as frequently as you choose to i feel that your hair does not look as oily because there are not a bunch of strands unless you have partial dreads that's a little bit different especially the face framing hairs but i think that you just look you know the same every day your hair looks the same there is really no bad hair day and with one little mist you can make these frizzies lay down and you can flip your part whichever side you want you know what I mean you can do whatever and it doesn't look oily or nasty and that's a pro in my opinion now let's dive into the cons negatives but there's always got to be a negative and that's how we have positives is because if we didn't have something shitty or negative to compare it to it wouldn't be so epic and positive so continuing a con transformation even though i have it on my pros list i feel that it can be a divided situation because it can also be a con to the certain person or personality type and it's a con in the facts of frustration and patience or lack of and I hear baby on monitor hold that thought okay I am back nursing baby back to sleep I may have gained myself about 20 minutes so we will continue to wrap this up basically I loved the transformation so it was a pro but certain people hate the transformation and they don't have the patience for it and they don't like all the loops and the different stages and I actually really liked them. I embraced the heck out of them. I thought it was so much fun. That is the whole point of starting the dreadlocks on purpose. Okay, so some people really lose touch of the meaning behind dreadlocks. You have giant knots on top of your head so they are not supposed to look perfect and nature is imperfect and another con summer is hotter these bad boys are like wool on top of your head so in the winter time it can keep you really toasty and warm and in the summertime since you're sweatier and it's hotter you can get a little itchier um another actually pro that I forgot to mention on my pro side is that you actually don't have to do as many oil treatments because your skin is less dry, your scalp is less dry, um, all of the above in the summertime. But you do, however, have to amp it up a bit in the winter time. So that could be a con, is that you have to pay a little bit more attention to your skin and scalp um, health and moisturization and otherwise you're going to be miserable and itchy and it's annoying um so that could be a con in the summertime with the itchy and the hot and um can also be a pro in the summertime of less moisturization because it is already humid out there's moisture in the air 
hence in the winter there is not and it's very dry brittle itchy cold bitter can you tell that i hate the winter another con would be job appropriateness or job friendly depending on what you have as a career um, where you have to present yourself it can be really tricky to make your hair look awesome when it's in some of those shitty stages of development and you have the loops and the frizz and you're not quite to the 100 percent matured level but basically um my boss hated the fact that i got dreadlocks absolutely despised it and he is a very um particular man in that department when it comes to appearance and things to that nature and uh, to the point where if I weren't such an awesome worker not to toot toot my own horn but I am I would have been let go and um, also I think in agreeance too because I serve a lot of elderly people that actually adore my hair is that I have a lot of appropriate hairstyles that I accommodate again back to the elegance um, factor that you can really make things look nice but it's a little bit harder too and jobs are a little less likely to accept you so you really have to take care of your head in that aspect to assure and secure your career or job um, and the con is it sucks that a lot of places do not approve on a side note to that I am having an upcoming video um, showing you elegant hairstyles that I also incorporate within my job title that have given me many compliments from all different ages, races, sizes, um, various types of people that my boss has actually had a more open mind to, wow, she really makes them look nice, so I'm okay with that. A con is longer washing time. It takes me at least 10 to 15 minutes longer in the shower I like to have quick showers. I'm a mother of three children, ages nine, seven, and three months. So I don't have much time to myself, let alone to shower. And when it comes to the hair, it usually takes me a little while. I have to get it done earlier in the day. I try not to wash my hair. If it's afternoon, like past afternoon, um, noon time, I will not. I will just say, F it, I'm not gonna do it today, I'll do it tomorrow. I like to generally get my hair done anywhere in that morning window of you know, 6 to 12 range and if it's past the 12 o'clock afternoon range I will not do it because my hair um, it doesn't take a super long time to dry but some dread heads with the really thick blunt size dreads it takes forever it may even take them a day and a half honestly if they didn't have some of the Sun's help and we're outside to let some of the breeze and the Sun help dry um, also hair dryer I do not use hair dryer I recommend not doing hair dryer in the beginning stages of your dreadlocks because it will create extra frizz however I am supportive of it because it does help things dry faster but so you have to be much more cautious take much more time lots of sponging like this to get the shampoo from the scalp cleaning out and it's going through your dreads so you're like trying to get it all out like this and it takes me again 10 to 15 minutes longer con another con lots of grooming in the beginning and this could be optional this could people don't care or give two shits if they're doing the neglect method as long as they're separating that's usually their only thing let me make sure i separate so my things don't congo some people like the congo i could never like the Congo. I'm too particular and things like that. Um, so yeah, lots of grooming in the beginning. Back to job title, I had to do a lot of grooming in the beginning. I did crocheting a great deal the first three months of my dreadlock life. And I regret a lot of it because I was doing it incorrectly. Yes, there is a right and a wrong way of crocheting your dreadlocks. I have a video out there that you can watch that I will save the time here. It explains it all there and it is called Why I Said Goodbye to Crocheting. I also have a video out there that says how to crochet dreadlocks. So basically, please watch both of them if you are a crocheter of the dreadlocks because there is a right and wrong way and the wrong way can cause severe damage and I was doing things wrong in the beginning. I learned somewhat in the hard ways so I have a lot of experience and then um, I also know the, the perks of being able to crochet 
and uh, that was part of my grooming in the beginning is I did a lot to make them look neater and tighter and more locked up faster to make them more elegant in appearance for my job. I wish I didn't have to, but I did have to. Another con, which I've mentioned with the washing, is the drying time. It takes a lot longer. Again, I don't wash if it's after past the noon time of day. I won't wash because it takes a long time to dry. However, if it is around the noon time and I know I'm going to be outside for the remainder of the day and it's nice and say it's summer, spring, or fall and it's windy and sunny, I will because it's windy and sunny. But I will make sure that I moisturize before going out because the sun can also damage the hair when the hair is wet and in the sun it's more prone to like frying a little bit, kind of. So you want to make sure that you're taking care of it, but in that aspect I will. But it does take a heckin' long time to dry, especially the real thick ones. Um, not so bad for me, but for most people, 90% of dried heads, it takes a while to dry. Last but not least on my cons list is the stereotype and the haters. Whenever somebody has dreadlocks, the stereotypes and the haters are commenting to you that you're either dirty, you don't wash your hair, um, you have things living or growing in it. Rest in peace, Bob Marley. Love the man to death, but he did have quite a bit of creatures growing on his head and in his dreadlocks, but that was his journey. That was a different story. You do not have to stereotype every dreadhead for that reason. Um, also, nasty, neglect, Congo, you know, rat's nest, blah, blah, blah. I could go on and on forever. Keyword was blah, 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 bullshit, okay? Every person is different. Everybody grooms differently, takes care of themselves differently, uh, appearance differently, gives a shit about appearance or hygiene or whatever have you differently. So the stereotypes and the haters can all go to hell because it's ridiculous. Um, however, you're always going to have a stereotype person or a hater in many departments in the entire world. Just pick a subject. Religion, politics, okay, like war, love, hate, you know, color, racism, sexism, ageism. It's everywhere. So you're going to get that. And um, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? As long as you're happy and you're confident within yourself and it's something that you want to be doing, who cares what other people think? At the end of the day, those people are unsure of what they think of themselves. So in a way, feel sad for them. You know, don't let it get to you. If you're doing what you love to do, don't worry about what others think. And I did struggle with that in the first month or two because I'm a big people person and I have hardly anybody that hates me. Um, there's literally like two or three people in the whole world that don't jive with me very well, <clears throat> one being the father of my two first kids. So, not to drop bombs or anything, but there's always going to be somebody. And it's hard to accept the way that they feel about you, and it hurts. Sometimes it can be really hurtful, but you can't let it. So as long as you're confident and you accept yourself and you know what you want or love or enjoy, then do it. And don't let others stand in your way because that's no way to live. You're not here on this earth to impress other people. You are here to fulfill your life and your goals and your morals and intuitions and, and inspirations and, and everything all in a package deal. Everything I just said in one mold for your life. You do for yourself. Don't worry about the haters and the stereotypers, but the con is they're gonna be there. So again, screw them, who cares? I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers. I want to say thank you to those who choose to subscribe to me in the very near future. I love to help. I love making dreadlock videos because I love the dreadlock journey. I have learned so much from start of a year and five months ago to now and where they have matured to this state. Um, I have thousands of video ideas swarming around in my brain that will continue to come pumping out onto the, my YouTube channel. Again, it's Piscean Dreadlock. Uh, if you have questions or comments, please leave them down below. Uh, please click the subscribe button if you choose to subscribe and you want to learn more about the things that I discuss and talk about, uh, the experiences that I share. 
information, informative videos. I'm all about. Again, I love helping. Um, I really appreciate you watching. And if you ha have, blah, 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 I'm like tripping on my words. Ooh. Anyway, trying to say, if you have any suggestions or would like me to make a video that I have not made yet, please ask me to and I will do because I love, again, helping and I really enjoy this. It is a huge way for me to be able to express myself and the things that I enjoy in this lifetime and I'm glad that all of you are watching to be able to enjoy it as well. So good day, goodbye YouTubers and thank you again for watching. Subscribe for more. Um, peace!